Hello, my name is Colin Riddington. I am the owner of Mendit Data Systems, and today I'm going to talk to you about how we can use Microsoft Access to view the extended properties of any Windows file. Now, all Windows files have got several standard properties. These include the name, the file size, the file type, the date it was created, and the date it was modified. And most, if not all, of these are typically shown in the Details view in Windows File Explorer, as you can see below. For certain special folders, for example video files or audio files, you may see additional properties or other properties. For example, for MP3 files, you may see the track number, the title, the artist involved, the album and the length of the file. All files have got additional properties not normally seen in Explorer. These are called extended file properties. And you can view any of these by right clicking on the heading area of the folder. There are a number of properties listed, the common ones that you might want to add, or you can click on more to see the full list. Ticking any of those properties will then add them to that folder in Windows File Explorer. For example, I've added date created and date last saved to the folder I showed you before. And you can repeat that process for any folder, adding different properties as appropriate for the file type shown. For example, for JPG image files, you might want to add the image dimensions, if it was taken on a mobile phone, the camera model, the flash mode, uh, focal length, etc. Now, all easy enough to do, but it can get very tedious if you do this for every individual file. Luckily, there is a better approach. We can use Microsoft Access to view all extended file properties for any file that we choose to select. And I'm going to show you my application now and show you how it works to do just that. Now the application has got a very basic interface when it's first opened with just a few buttons and very little information. In order to find out how it works you can click on the view help button. That will open PDF that is supplied with the program which goes through the various different screens, the features of the program which I'm about to summarise for you now. The program is very easy to use however and I suspect that you will find very little difficulty in actually picking it up. Let's start off with the extended properties list. I mentioned there's a large number of properties. This report here then shows you the full list of those properties. They each have an ID number starting with ID 0 and going through to ID 320. So there's 321 of these in total. The last few correspond only to video files. The first ones here are the standard properties that you see in most if not all Windows files. Let's close that. And of course with that report there and all the reports I'm about to show you, you can export the data to Excel or if you prefer to do so you can look at the underlying table and see what is actually involved there. Next report here is a list of all of the different file types that I've tested already. Now. I've tested about 25 different file types and as you can see many of them have the same properties at the beginning there before they start to diverge. And I've tested ACZD files, access files, bitmap files, CD audio etc etc through to zip files. And with one exception the first five properties I use are sorry are available to all of those file types. The one exception is CD audio which doesn't use date access because it's a read, read only file. Instead it uses ID 5, extended property 5 for the location. And carrying on through you can see then some, some properties are exhibited by all file types, others by only one type. For example this is MP3 files here. And as we go on through onto the, the ones at the bottom, we're talking, we've got a lot to do with the video, uh, sorry, the photographs that you might get on your mobile phone. Carrying on through the screens here, though, we have some properties which I haven't got any file types that I've tested so far that actually use these optional attendees, organizer address, and so on. Going through here, assistance name, birthday, etc., for contacts, I, I presume, but I don't know what sort of file they would be. And in fact, the next screen we've got none at all of those have been used. Going through to the end, as I mentioned, the last few are for video files only, including the bitrate and the video orientation. 
at the bottom there you can see the total number of extended properties for that file type and they vary from about 20 odd up to almost 50 for JPG files uh, which can actually include all sorts of EXIF data. Okay now if if I go back to the beginning of that report once more, just to say this is a dynamic crosstab report. It is actually built from a normalized table, which is then a crosstab query is used and the headings are displayed according to the information that is provided there. Let's look at the original table. And as you can see, it's a normalized table here, all the different file types tested, listed by the property number and property name and whether or not that is actually exhibited that particular file and if we carry on through you can see ticked where, it's, where that file is actually uses that property unticked where it doesn't do so. Now if we now look at this crosstab query then that's been transformed as you can see with the file types sorry the property types going downwards the file types going acrosswards and Coming back to the report once more then, if new file types are added, then they will be included automatically in this list. And I'm about to add a file, a file type called BAK as an example. So if I click on Browse here, and if I now go to SQL Backups, I've got a large number of backups of one of my school's databases here, large files about one and a half uh, gigabytes. And if I now click show properties, although the file size is enormous, getting the actual properties it takes only a split second or so. And as you can see now, we've got 24 different file types for that the file size, that's file type, when it was modified, when it was created, etc. etc. The extension, the folder name, etc. And if I now close that and go back to here, you can see BAK has been added in that particular space there automatically without me doing anything at all. Let's do one more, and I will now use the file type that is actually how this video is being recorded, an FBR file. And if I click on show properties, again we see the report, we can export it to Excel as I mentioned before if we wish to. And if we click on here now, FBR has been added, as you can see I hope, there. No effort at all on my part. Now, if we want to do so, we can actually speed things up by getting all of the files of a particular type from a particular folder. And if we go to to Folder Image Viewer here, I'll click on an image file, image folder here, and I've got a series of photographs here which I'm now going to get the properties of. So it's got the folder, the file type, click on Get Properties, and a progress bar shows you how far we've got. Only takes a few seconds and as you can see you've got eight files there, it took just under eight seconds for that. Obviously if you have a large number of, of files in the folder then it's going to take proportionately longer. If I look at that there now we can see the results of the standard properties for those various different files. Let's just move that across a bit. And if I click on any one of those, I will see the same sort of reports as you are now getting pretty used to. Quite a large number of different file of properties here because it's a JPG file, the camera type, the flash information, etc. Close that. And if we want to, we could also have got that by just clicking on the button there, single click, and then clicking print selected file but we can also print all those files if we want to do so. And if we look now, we've now scrolled through, we've got each of the different files in that folder and the information for each of those. Now it might be that I'd want to actually save that information for future use. And so while I've got that screen open, if I now click on Save Properties Data, it's going to save that information to a table. The table name is based on the folder, and also the file type. So the table name will be Photos JPJ. If I click on that there, it's already been completed. If 
if I now go to here you can actually see all the information for those files there and it's been added to this list here if we look at a couple of others that I've saved already you can see exactly the same idea bitmap files and so on and that's pretty much all there is to the program except to say in order to do this the program uses a library called Microsoft Shell Controls and Automation you can see there each of these uses then a part of that library called get details of looping through each of the properties in turn to get the details there the, the property name and the property value and then to append it into a suitable table there if we now go back to the powerpoint that i showed you at the beginning there and i'll show you where we can get this from the application is available from my website www.menditdatasystems.co.uk extended file properties and you can see a section of the web page there and it mentions the get details of property that is part of the Microsoft shell controls and automation library and the downloading consists of the application together with the PDF file before I go just want to mention two more related applications also on my website there's a folder image viewer. This is designed purely to look at image files and in this particular case JPG files. Now for each of the files that we actually look at you will see the file name, type, where it's actually located, created, date created, date modified and so on including the dimensions. With JPG files, as some of you will have found out, there's an irritating issue that when loaded into Access, they are rotated anti-clockwise by 90 degrees. So, for example, an image which is actually uh, in portrait form like this will look as it shows you on the left there. The program reads the orientation information from the, from the EXIF data and then rotates it by the appropriate amount, as you can see here. That is available from menditdatasystems.co.uk folder image viewer. And one more application, further again on the same idea of photographs here, the EXIF data also includes GPS data, latitude, longitude, altitude, and where the camera was pointing when you took the photograph. Taking that same photo as I showed you in the previous screen there, we can actually grab that data then, and from that we can then load in a Google map showing you exactly where it was located, which should tell you the nearest place to where that photograph was. I was very close to this particular address at the time. And you can zoom that, you can change the type of, of map and so on. And you can get that from menditdatasystems.co.uk, ge geolocation from photographs. Thank you very much.